<laughs> okay. So final meditation posture. We'll start out on the breath for a minute, like we usually do. And as always with breath meditation, we'll try to turn our attention away from all the outside sounds. Usually being pretty noisy to meditate in this neighborhood. I'll use that loud compressor noise to, oh, well, there it goes. Uh, so we'll let go of the breath and we'll actually flip. And instead of focusing on the breath and letting go of all the noise, we're actually going to focus on the outside sounds. And Normally what happens when you focus on outside sounds is your mind quickly creates an image. So you hear the motorcycle go by and you picture the motorcycle. So what we'll try to do for the next few minutes is focus on the sound as sound. One thing that can help with that is uh, particularly passing noises on the street, but even the TV and the footsteps upstairs and noises in the room. Focus on the increase and decrease in intensity. So the motorcycle, you know, well, that one's a lousy motorcycle impression, but it's going to get louder and then softer. Watching the way it changes can help make sure that you're keeping your attention on the actual sense data of the sound, not letting it glue together with mental constructs.
most common way you'll get distracted as we do this is focusing on inside sounds instead, talking to yourself in your head. And probably the second most common is going to be listening to the outside sounds in, in the wrong way. I'm trying to figure out whether that's a police siren or an ambulance siren. And it's a nice practice to flip back to the right way. Where you let go of the image of what you think that car is. You hear the sound waning. Now we'll move to the main focus of the meditation, which is we'll try to let go of the outside sounds, although it's especially loud here tonight. And we'll try to focus on inside sounds. Generally what an inside sound will be is talking to yourself in your head. The outside sounds are not all that sneaky. The only real trick they play on you is this, uh, in Buddhism it's called binding. It's when the senses merge together in an incorrect way. You know, if you see an ambulance because you hear the siren, maybe it wasn't an ambulance. The inside sounds will play lots of tricks on you. One common experience people have when they try to focus on mental talk is that the mental talk goes totally silent. There's nothing there. And next thing you know, you're completely lost in it. Mental talk about meditation is pretty sneaky. <clears throat> uh, 
a few tips I can give for this. One is some types of mental talk may feel like just talk. Obviously, that's a voice in your head. It's not real. It's not important. You don't have to listen. And some mental talk will feel like the real you. Uh, this is your soul talking. Uh, this is not just inside sound. So the goal is to treat all mental talk just like we did the ambulance. It's just noise. And it rises and passes away, gets louder, gets softer. I, I think this meditation is important to have in your toolbox because for probably all of us, mental talk is the most distracting thing. In fact, in this meditation, you'll notice that almost all the time that you get distracted, you're actually still looking at mental talk, so you're, you're staying on the object, you're just staying on it in the wrong way. You're mindlessly listening to it, agreeing with it, feeling like you're speaking it. So we'll listen for inside sounds. <clears throat> and of course, at times there may not be any. Just like on quieter nights, we could listen for outside sounds and sometimes not hear any. So the idea is to stay in the domain, meaning keep your attention where the inside sounds would be or will be when they arise again. <clears throat> this is a very hard thing to do. So uh, that easy trap to fall into with meditation where you get lost a lot, you get lost for a long time, and then feel like you stink at this and you're messing it up. I'll always try to stay out of that, but one way to stay out of that tonight is recognizing you are trying to do something very hard. <clears throat> and so there's no realistic expectation that you will be awesome out of it, that you will knock it out of the park.
One thing you might notice about the inside cells is this incredibly disjoint nature of it. It's pretty similar to dreaming, where it goes from one thing to another to another, and without any mindfulness, you don't notice how jumpy it is. And what we'll do next, especially because it's a lot night here, is uh, you can focus on either the inside or the outside sounds. The inside sounds we really tend to treat as special, as relevant, as important. We tend to identify not as the listener of these inside sounds, but as the speaker. And of course you can intentionally make inside sounds, but usually you don't. Usually they're just showing up as randomly as the TV upstairs and people passing on the street. So by letting the attention drift to either inside sounds or outside sounds, what we're trying to do is notice actually the similarity of these. How much freedom lies in being able to treat the inside sounds just like noise. The, no the outside sounds feel pretty obviously like they have nothing to do with me. As we hear the radios playing and the cars driving by, Sometimes I love the songs and sometimes not, but I, I never think it has anything to do with me, my quality as a human, whether the next vehicle is a motorcycle or a car or I like their music. The inside sounds for many of us tend to be awfully negative about us. If you are like, not all, but most of the people that I know. The inside sounds are pretty critical of you. They tell you negative stories about otherwise neutral things, or 
personal stories about impersonal things. The internal voice every now and then has some great ideas, but almost all the time it's talking nonsense. Either uh, like a fake news feed or uh, just singing songs. So there's quite a lot of suffering to be had in identifying with these inside, th inside sounds these thoughts, and consequently, quite a lot of freedom to be had, to whatever degree, be able to treat them just like the outside sounds, just noise. If you get the hang of this for a minute, and the inside talk really just starts to sound like noise, sometimes that can be scary, uh, just because we tend to identify with the inside talk. If you get the hang of this and it brings up any fear, as long as you're able to, I would try to just keep going. Uh, fear is just a sign of uh, some different way of seeing the sense of self. It's, it's ultimately a, a good thing signpost of a good thing. Yeah. 
And if there's some type of internal talk that's just getting you every time, I'm finding myself kind of shocked how loud it is outside tonight. And when I start talking in my head about how I wish it were softer, I get sucked into that. And if there's some particular type of talking in your head that's really sucking you in, one thing you can do is just set an extra intention to notice it. If that doesn't work, you can actually try labeling it. So you want a kind of short label. Maybe I can use complaint for mine. Every time I want to talk about how I wish it was quieter, just label it complaint. And then I don't get so sucked into that particular type of talk. Or I've found for most people, the, the most common one of this is, is uh, talking about how your meditation's going.
Much of what we try to do in meditation practice is put the mind in balance uh, on a number of different dimensions of balance. Where maybe the most important one is between getting too close to the phenomena, such that you're identified and wrapped up with them, and getting too far from the phenomena, such that you're dissociating or bypassing. And so we'll, we'll close by going back to the breath. So we spent most of the meditation going pretty deeply into the sounds. We'll spend the last few minutes trying to come out of the sounds, trying to ignore them and just leave them there in the background. And if you find this too hard, if you really can't focus, either your thoughts are too loud or the city is too loud, if you can't seem to stay on the breath, it's okay to go back to listening to the sound. We'll put it in the background if we can. <laughs> 